to no cabin fever today. We have Tobias Theobald with us from Resolution and he will show us how to create a JIRA test instance in just five minutes. I give you now the stage, Tobias. <clears throat> All right. Hi. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Let me get my screen share started and the presentation. All right, um, hope that's working. Um, hi all again, uh, I'm Tobias. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a Jira test instance in five minutes or actually less um, if you're prepared. I'm from Resolution, I'm a senior developer there. Um, quick copy pasted about us slide. Uh, we're a platinum top vendor in the Atlassian marketplace, um, but I'm not actually going to talk about any of our apps today, but rather how you can uh, pull up your Jira test instance. Um, for that, uh, we're going to use um, Docker. Uh, Docker is a um, containerization technology which uh, runs on Linux and Windows and on Mac OS, um, you will uh, get a virtual machine. Um, that's very, very easy to set all of that up. You just um, go to their website um, and install Docker Desktop for your operating system if you're on Mac OS or Windows. Uh, and on Linux, you just go to uh, get.docker.com or you download Docker from your package uh, manager. Um, for this presentation, I'm going to be using a software called Kitematic, which is just a rather simplistic but pretty UI for using Docker. And I've already set Docker up on my system. So I'm going to show you, great, um, how this works. So this is Kitematic, uh, the aforementioned UI that you can run once you have your Docker desktop running right here. Um, Kitematic allows you to just search the Docker Hub, which is a repository of Docker images um, for the software that you want. So in our case, we want to look for Jira software, and we want to go for the Atlassian Jira software image. Um, we want to select a version, uh, which Docker calls tags, but most people just use them for, for versions. Um, and we just select 8.9 in our case, which is, I think, the most recent one, and just click Create. And in your case, it will initially download the image um, and then start the container based on that image. Um, but in my case, since I've already downloaded it, it just starts the container. And you know, it, but when, it, when I say it starts the container, it basically starts Jira. So you can see in the web preview that Jira is now basically already uh, ready to be set up. Um, so I think that was less than five minutes even. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's go back to the presentation and, and, and see what happened here. Sorry. Okay. All right. So what just happened? Um, well, Docker was already running on my system. Um, and as I've mentioned before, it's running in a Linux VM, uh, since it's a Linux based, uh, technology and, uh, Kitematic was communicating with that Docker, uh, daemon inside that virtual machine. Um, in order to pull up the container. Um, Docker Desktop also takes care of exposing the ports, which you've, uh, which you've seen here. We've, uh, we've accessed uh, this uh, port on localhost, um, and it also takes care of volumes. Um, a quick word about Docker, um, hub, uh, Docker uh, or what happened there in the background. Um, it pulled the image from the aforementioned Docker Hub, which uh, also has a web interface, by the way. Um, Docker Hub um, is kind of a repository of lots of um, pre-built images. And each image is supposed to represent a single piece of software or a single app, right? Um, each uh, image has its uh, readme. Uh, each image has, its, uh, has a bunch of versions usually. And we've uh, previously picked the 8.9 version. Um, what we've done in Kitematic, you can also do on the command line, by the way, everything here can be done on the command line as well, if you enter that more, um, is that we've told the, the Docker daemon to go to the Docker Hub and download the 8.9 uh, image for Jira software by Atlassian, and then to instantiate that and launch a container. So 
what is actually an image? Um, well, an image is basically a bunch of layers of modifications to the file system. As your base file system, you usually have something empty, then you have your base operating system with some you know, shared libraries and stuff like that. And maybe you have your Java installation, you have your Jira software runtime, and then maybe um, some configuration uh, files uh, to, well, start up Jira or some scripts to generate the configuration files to start up Jira. Um, and at the very top, and this is what happens when you instantiate such an image, um, is another thin read-write layer um, which, to which changes will be written once you've instantiated the container. Um, yeah, so that's how images work in, in Docker. Um, the Docker daemon will also take care of um, for doing, a, doing a port forward from that aforementioned port on localhost to inside the container. Um, this is also called, called exposing the port. Um, and then the Docker daemon will just go ahead and run the main executable, um, which in the case of this image is a small script that generates uh, the database configuration and the server XML um, and some other stuff. Um, and then it will run Jira. So yeah, that just happened all in a few seconds. Um, you probably didn't even see it, so it, it was so fast. Um, let me see if I can put this on a different desktop so I can just jump back. All right, now, um, we could just now go ahead and like set this up, maybe using the internal H2 database um, so that all the data would be stored in the Jira home directory. But the problem is that uh, if we do that and we then later on want to update Jira, that thin read-write layer that, you've, uh, that I've mentioned before, it gets thrown away. So the way that you're supposed to upgrade um, G, uh, sorry, Docker containers is that you have to have your storage in a persistent um, place. So for example, the host operating system or another container. Um, and you have to map that onto the running containers. So in our case, um, we would be running, we would be mapping that into the Jira home directory. Now, Kydmatic makes this easy. You can either go to settings, volumes, and then set where you want this to point on your local file system, or you can just, you know, have it do it or automatically by enabling volumes. All right. As you can see, it's, it has to restart because it basically starts a new volume from, from the very beginning. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's starting again. So you should do this. If you want to do this, you should do this at the very beginning before you've set anything up. So um, as I said, if you wanted to now upgrade this whole thing, you can now delete your old container. Um, start a new one, and then use on that new container the old volume mapping that you did before. Uh, with this, um, since since, since um, no data is actually inside the container outside of the outside of the home directory or, or the Jira home directory, um, that's totally fine for the H2 database anyway. If you want to use another database, well, that's possible too. Um, you can basically you have to create another container. Um, based on, for example, the Postgres image. Um, in that container, you can then, you have to set the password, which you'll see Postgres doesn't like being run without a, sorry, Postgres doesn't like being run without a password. Um, and then either link the containers, which is kind of legacy, but Kydematic still does it, or you can use the same uh, network and use a separate network for those two containers, but we're not going to go into that today. Um, the same caveats with persistence also um, apply for the database. So we're going to do that now. You've already seen me um, set up the Jira home directory here. Uh, now I want to start a new Postgres um, container. And so I just go to new here and then search for Postgres. Um, I want to select the 9.6 tag because as far as I know, 9.6 is the one Postgres version that's supported across all uh, currently supported um, Atlassian on-premise softwares, uh, software uh, packages. And then I just click create. And it's going to tell me, you know, you need to set your password. So 
as I've mentioned, we do that. Um, all the settings in Docker are usually done via environment variables. So this is really a, like the place where you want to set stuff. So we're going to just um, set that to Atlassian right here. And then it needs to restart. Um, I, okay. Oh, I forgot to click save, sorry. <laughs> and now it's uh, created this whole thing. Um, again, we want to use persistence, so we enable volumes. And then the last thing we need to do is um, connect the two uh, containers together. And we do that by going to the settings of Jira software and go to network, select the other container that we want to uh, connect and call it Postgres internally. And then again, it has to restart. Um, then we go to the network view again, sorry, the browser view again. And uh, once it's started up, we can now set up the database. Now, what you can also do, um, and you can see that in the uh, readme for the Jira software container, is you can set environment variables um, to match all of your, your database settings right here. Um, but it's not strictly necessary. It can just automatically generate these for you. And again, your environment variables, you would just set here um, as we've seen before. And the Jira setup, I can now configure it myself. And I want to use my own database. I'm going to use a Postgres. We've called it um, Postgres before, I think. Yep, Postgres, that's the alias we want to use now. That's uh, going to be the host name. Um, database we want to connect to is Postgres as well, username as well. And the password we've just set is Atlassian. We can test the connection and it works and we can click next and this is going to take a few minutes. Uh, a little bit too long for this presentation to wait for. But you know, anyway, you have a running system now and that's how you get that done in under five minutes. If you can, you know, if you train yourself a little bit, you can get that done in under five minutes. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience? I don't think so. So our next talk tomorrow will be Maya Biersack. I think it will be in German. And sie redet über the loop approach. Wie gelingt eine nachhaltige Transformation in eine neue Form der Zusammenarbeit? Es bleibt also spannend. Ich freue mich. Wir freuen uns auf euch auch morgen. Dankeschön nochmal an Tobias für die sehr schnellen fünf Minuten und den Einblick. Bleibt gesund. Wir sehen uns. Tschüss.